Okay. So to set up a triggered capture on the OptiView XG, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and click on when packet found. So I'm going to come and click on that. Now it is at this point that I can go in and specify my triggered my trigger packet. So in that case, let's delete this for right now. In this case, I'm going to come in and say specify trigger packet. What the OptiView is going to do is it's going to look for this triggered packet. It's going to look for this to go across the wire, and that's going to be the trigger that's going to stop our trace. So I'm going to say if I see a packet going to 12.127.17.72, I'm going to hit enter. Now, does that exact address matter? No. This just needs to be an address that I would not normally ping from the machine that's having a problem. I am going to look for a ping packet going to that address, and I'm going to use that as the trigger to stop the trace. Then I'm going to come in and select ICMP. Now, when I select ICMP, I'm telling it, look for an ICMP packet, which is what our ping is. Now, down here, trigger position within the buffer. If I set it to the end, as soon as the cap as soon as the trigger occurs, the capture will stop. If I set it to the start, as soon as the trigger occurs, the capture will start and it will capture until the buffer's full. Where I like to put the trigger is I like to put it in the center. If I put it in the center, what will happen is I will get 50% pre-trigger, 50% post-trigger. So we're gonna click OK. And now I'm going to click on Start Capture. So what's gonna happen is this will capture and it will continue to wrap that buffer until it sees the trigger frame. Now, over on the machine that's having the problem, I will come into their desktop and I'll right click and I will say new shortcut. And the new short shortcut, I'm going to say ping 12.127.17.72 minus N1. So I'm just going to send one ping. That's all I need. And this will send that ping that will trigger my trace. And I'll hit next. And I'm going to call it the problem happened and I'll hit finish. So now there's an icon on their desktop that they can click on when the problem occurs. Now, if I ask somebody to call me when the problem occurs, that could end up taking some time. But if I give them an icon on their desktop to click on, they're more likely to click on that. So now the problem they've been experiencing happens. So they double click on that and you see that T start going across the screen right there and as soon as it gets to roughly 50-50 or exactly 50-50, the trace stops. And if I come in and click on view capture and I say open that trace, what I notice is that my frame numbers are negative. Why are they negative? Because this is pre-trigger. And in fact, if I click on my little icon, search icon, I say take me to the trigger frame, there is our trigger frame. There I am sending that ping to 12.127.17.72. Everything that's positive is post trigger. So this is a way that I can come in and set up a trigger to capture when the problem happened. Now, that captures it once. I wanna capture it every time it happens. So what I do is I click on save sequences to disk. And I'll come in here and I'll say uh, July trigger. And we'll save that as a cap format. We'll save it continuously. I'll hit close and start capture. So now this could take a day, hours, weeks, months, but as long as I have that OptiView in there capturing, it will be capturing that traffic that's going across the wire to that problem machine. Or if I have a whole group of people that are having a problem, I could use this to monitor the uplink on a switch 
and I could go in and take a look at traffic for a whole group of people, and then I could set it, this icon up on every one of their desktops. And whoever clicks on it will cause the trace to stop and save that trace. So now, problem happened, I click on it. So now we see our trigger frame go across. But this time, when we hit 50-50, it will stop and save the trace and start capturing again. We have our first example of the problem occurring. So now we could wait some period of time, and as if the problem happens again, and the person clicks on the icon, it will trigger again. And we see that we kept one of one capture. As soon as this one stops, it will save two of two captures. This now allows us to go in, and I would be able to see those captures. I could come into my uh, OptiView browser. I could go into the web interface. I could come out here to packet captures, and there are my July triggers right there. And if I open up one of those traces and I click on it, it's going to open it up with the ClearSight Analyzer. And in this case, we could open it up with ClearSight on our OptiView. We'll give this a second to down, or let's see, it downloaded that. Let me go back to my web browser. I'll click on that. It's going to open it up with ClearSight. And so let's take a look and see what that trace looked like. And because I saved that trace in a cap format, it shows up with the negative numbers. I can go find my trigger frame. And now I could start going in and taking a look at what happened on the wire at the time that problem occurred. And I'll tell you, if, the more times that we can have a trace to back up what was going on with a problem, the more likely we are to be able to get to the root of that problem.